So last video we came up with a box that could do our player name and keep track of his health points. Now it's time that we add a little bit of danger so that this fiendishly handsome young hero actually has a way to be defeated. This is the Night Runner, and in this tutorial we're going to add some enemies. So to get started with enemies, the first thing that we're going to want to do is head on over to our hierarchy. I'm going to right click here and create a new 2D object. In this case, I'm going to pick a sprite and you can choose what shape you would like, but I think I'm going to make mine a isometric diamond. I'm going to rename this one over in my inspector as enemy for now. And I'm going to double click on the hierarchy to zoom in. Now at the moment he's overlapping my player, so let's move him away from the player. I'm going to head into my sprite renderer here where I can change the color and I'm going to just go with a nice dark red, which will make it obvious that he's dangerous. All right, at this point, we are ready to actually get scripting. And to do this, we're going to start by heading into our player health script. Now, the first thing we need to do if our player is going to be having the chance to actually take damage is write that into his health script. Now, we don't want him taking damage automatically at the start of the game or constantly throughout it in the update function. We're going to need to create a new function. This new function is going to be public because our enemy is going to need to be able to talk to it. And I'm going to call this one take damage. Now, like all functions, there's a double bracket afterwards, but this time we're actually going to put something inside of that. I'm going to create an integer and I'm going to call this one amount. And what this simply means is that when our enemy goes to talk to this script and it set, tells us we need to take damage, it will also send over a number the amount of damage that we're going to take. When that message comes over to take damage, we're going to take the player's health and we're going to subtract whatever amount is. So if it sends over one damage, we'll subtract one. If it's two, we'll subtract two, that sort of thing. Now at this point, all that remains is to make sure that we are checking to see if our player runs out of health altogether. To do that, we're going to create an if statement and simply going to check if our health is less than or equal to zero. And if that's the case, we're simply going to destroy the player's game object. All right, so our player is now capable of taking damage and eventually being destroyed, but we still need to make our enemy actually deal that damage. So back in Unity, I'm going to start by making our enemy an object that we can actually interact with. So let's add component, and I'm going to add a collider here. And we're going to add a Polygon Collider 2D in this case. Now we can actually script our enemy's damage. So we're going to create a new C Sharp script. I'm going to call this one Enemy Damage. All right, now this script is actually a relatively simple one. We're going to start by creating a new public integer. And this one simply, I'm going to call mine attack power, but essentially this is um, how much damage you want him to do to the player. Afterwards, we want to make it not so that he damages the player at the start or constantly, but when he collides with the player. To do that, we're going to use a new function here called OnCollisionEnter2D. If you select it in Visual Studio and press Enter, it will fill in all of the syntax for you, and this one's a bit of a beast, so I recommend it. Now, essentially what this function does is it just makes it so that as soon as the game object that has this script, in our case the enemy, collides with anything, it will automatically call this function. Now, we want to make sure that this function is only being called if the enemy actually collides with the player. And so I'm going to type in an if statement here. We'll type if collision, which just means if the object that he has just collided with, dot game object, dot tag, is equal to player then something is going to happen. You can see how this works by going into Unity, clicking on the player, and then looking over into the inspector. You'll notice all game objects have a tag, and by selecting the player tag for this object, we can let our enemy know that this game object is in fact the player. Now, you'll remember back in our player health script that the function here is called take damage, and so he's simply going to call take damage, and then in brackets, the amount of damage he's going to send over is going to be equal to his attack power. Now, as you can see, our script is not having this at the moment. It doesn't like this simply because it doesn't know where to send take damage. If that function was inside of this script, it would work just fine, but it doesn't yet know how to talk to our player health script. So 
let's give it that ability. We're gonna head back up to the top here where all variables are declared and we're gonna create a public variable. This one's gonna be called a public player health. And what you're using here is just simply the exact name of the script itself that you're gonna be accessing. So if you called yours something different, make sure that you write that name here. Now within this script, I'm going to refer to this as player health and you'll notice I just made it lowercase at the beginning, that's the only difference. But this is the name I'll use throughout this script if I want to talk to it. So now, when I head down to my on collision enter function, it still doesn't know where take damage is, and I just need to tell it that it first has to look inside a player health. I'll put a period, it will find the take damage function and send over attack power. For now, let's say that this enemy deals 20 damage. At this point, we can save and head back over into Unity. And now the final steps are simply going to be, first of all, to click on our enemy. Down at the bottom here, we're going to add a component and I am going to add our enemy damage script. And the only thing left before this will be running is it still doesn't actually know where our player health script is. And as you know, it's on our player. So I'm simply gonna grab our player from the hierarchy, drag it into that box, and now it will know how to talk to our player. All right, so now when I get into the game, I can move around, but when I bump into the player, you'll notice that each time I hit him, I suffer damage. And in this case, it is 20 each time until eventually I am destroyed. Now, one little problem you'll notice here is simply that my health um, did not get all the way to zero. It's still reading as 20. If we go into our player health script, the reason for that is simply that Although our player took damage and it should have updated, it didn't have time to update before my player was destroyed because he was destroyed immediately the second his health got down there before this update had a chance to run. If we want to make it so that it doesn't up destroy him quite so quickly, so he has a little time left to finish running this, we simply need to go into our destroy function here and after game object, do a comma and simply put the amount of time that you would like it to wait. I'm going to go with 0.1 and I'll put an F there. Now the reason we put an F is because this is a floating point number, meaning it's a decimal. If we didn't put that, it would want to use this period um, like it does in situations up here where it's telling it to look inside of another script and there is no one script for it to look inside of. So we're gonna put the F so it knows we just want it to wait 0.1 seconds. Now when we play our game, we are able to keep bumping into our enemy and taking damage over and over again, and this time we actually reach zero before we're destroyed. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel.